All right, guys, hello. So it's my first time here, and uh, this is a CSS meetup, right? But a couple of you guys are developers, right? Not all designers, right? Anyway, so any one of you have been unfortunate enough to be in that sort of period where it's really awkward and we had to make things with tables and we, before we put classes and everything? Yeah? No? Yeah. OK, right. So it was, it was a really awkward moment in history. And it was, you know, there was this kind of pervasive uh, thought that CSS is very complicated and we probably shouldn't touch it. And up till today, it still kind of persists. So, but the thing is, CSS is pretty cool, right? That's why we're here. And it lets us make things like these, right? This is, this is just your normal component. And this is pretty easy to style with CSS. But uh, if you're probably new to CSS, you, you're, you probably wouldn't just really know how to dig in, right? You would. There's a lot of approaches in how to do it. There's Mac, CSS, and there's BEM and all that. But if you're just new to this and your natural instinct is probably to follow this sort of convention wherein you just put things, put classes where it's necessary, right? Anyone ever did this? I know I have. I, I, I really love doing this, really. It's, uh, it, it's something that people have been calling you know, uh, a semantic approach. It's actually fine, but for some reason, it's not kind of in favor today. But I still think it's pretty cool. But nowadays, we kind of think of this as a kind of naive approach. Because if we're going to do that, you're probably going to start by styling the whole thing, right? Like a photo card. And you're going to style the image inside a photo card. And you're probably going to style the text. You put a little padding. And inside that is a heading. And inside that heading, you have to make it responsive a little, you know. You just kind of keep going until you get this kind of side sideways mountain range where, <laughs> you know, it, it gets so indented so much and just kind of keep going. It, it's very strange. It's, kinda, it's a naive approach that kind of leads to really strange code. <laughs> right. So CSS does feel complicated, but uh, there's a lot of things that we could do right now to make it not feel so complicated. It doesn't really have to. Anyway, my name is Rico. That's my GitHub, Twitter, such and such. Uh, and I'm here to talk to you about my approach into doing this, dealing with this complexity. Right? But first, I'm going to tell you about this whole semantic thing and why people hate it. So like, people's first intuition when they get to CSS and you know, handle things like SAS or less it's like, wow, you could, you could nest your selectors, and it's going to be really awesome, because it's going to be readable. But in practice, doing it this way is kind of very, very cumbersome. Uh, let's say, for example, this one, you have a class title. And let's say you're going to make a new button that has a title in it. And it's really going to be strange, because that title thing will bleed to the button, and it's going to be bad. So as nice as the semantic approach, as I said, it's really naive. And it has its problems. It does have like really, really clean markup because you just get like very simple class names, right? But at, at the expense of making your CSS a little convoluted. So a lot of smart people in the world have saw, uh, like saw this problem and tried to solve it. One of them are the people behind BEM, Block Element Modifier. Anyone tried it? Anyone don't like it? OK, you and me, actually. I don't, I, well, I'll, I'll show you why I don't like it so much. So them is very, very simple, right? You take this component, and you break it down into its constituent parts called elements. And you name them accordingly in such ways as block dash dash element. So this is pretty fine, because it lets you have this really structured approach into how to put together your components and how to name them. But it, it's very. It's a little, it gets a little unwieldy at some point. Well, in CSS, it's actually very easy, especially if you're using something like a preprocessor like SAS, because it has these ways to deal with it. And it, you get really clean code. But once you get to the HTML, it's kind of a little, a little hard to really dig in. So that's one way to deal with it, which is pretty cool. It does its 
thing. And it really helps curb out the problems such as bleeding of class names into other nested components, things like that. But yeah, after a while, this gets a little tiresome to deal with. So a couple of other people have thought of how to deal with it, right? Let's say, what about, what about like the biggest CSS HTML project in the world, at least according to GitHub? How do they deal with it, right? So there's Bootstrap. And what they would do is they would have classes like these. So let's say you have a modal. You have a modal, it has a modal body, modal footer, such and such. And if you really think about it, this is exactly the same thing as BEM, except it's just a little different. It uses one dash instead of two. But it's pretty much the same concept. So you're still prone to the same kind of mess. So if I were to plot this into a graph, right? Let's say with the naive semantic way being on the left and the BEM being on the right. BEM gets really clean CSS, but the semantic way just kind of feels strange after a while once you scale up. And the cleanliness of, well, the naive, the semantic way is just really, well, you get shorter class names, but after a while, well, with the BEM and the bootstrap way, the class names all get a little longer than comfortable. So I was really thinking about this and a couple of my colleagues as well, and we tried to adopt, I tried to come up with a system that tries to meet it somewhere in the middle. So what if there's a way to make a compromise between both, have a way that you, know, you have a clean semantic code and still have clean, some clean CSS that's not overly nested? And it's actually pretty interesting, like how to deal with this, right? And let's say this is your component again. It's a simple card. And I still want to keep writing classes in the most natural descriptive way that I keep doing it. But how do I do that without you know, messing up my CSS? So if I've spent some time with this and documented what, you know, what, what a, a bunch of guidelines on how to do this. It's called RSCSS, and it's at rscss.io. Anyway, so if you really think about it, we are really meant to write CSS this way. At least that's how CSS is designed, how HTML is designed. You're not really supposed, I mean, there's no, nothing in the HTML or CSS spec that tells you you should write really long class names. And if you really just keep doing that and use straight up CSS, you could use something like the child selector to target all the sub elements, like so. And still, and that would just make it really, really clean to write, even in SAS. It's going to look like this when you're writing something like SAS or less or stylus. So it's a very simple guideline, simple set of guidelines wherein you're forced to, or at least suggested to, always think in components. So if you're doing style guides and such, you're probably already doing this. If you really are doing React, but if you're not, if you really think about it, every single page and every single website in the world is still something that could be broken down into its constituent parts that are like encapsulated in tiny pieces of code or tiny pieces of UI. So those are components. So it's really again, RSCSS is just really, really simple documents, like less than a thousand words, and it's just saying. When you do components, you name it like this, just at least two words, make it a little long, and use dashes. And when you make elements, so your components have elements in them, right? And you just name them a little shorter, like this. So that way, you don't get any confusion. Like, say, for example, I'm trying to write something new, and I'm trying to, say, make dot description, for example. And I'm thinking, like, is there any, is there any place in the code that's already using this class name? Or if it's using that class name, is it a component or an element? So if you follow this naming convention, it's very simple. Then you get to, you get to really know that, say, like, oh, a description. I know that's, a, that's an element. It's not a, uh, that, that, that's an element, not a component. So I, I know where to look. And of course, they could also have variants. So of course, not everything always looks the same. It probably has states. Let's say, for example, the search form it could be long, it could be short. So you just name your variants starting with a class name that starts with a dash. And I actually did not make this up myself. There are a couple of people I saw that have been using this. And it's kind of very similar to, say, how you would expect, like, say, Unix commands would 
have flags or switches, just start them with a dash. And interestingly, dash is probably the only symbol that you could start a CSS class with, along with an underscore. So it makes perfect sense. And the other thing is, since you're thinking in components, you place each component in a file. So each of your CSS files contain one and only one component. So let's say you have a photo card component. You put that in photocard.scss. So at the end of the day, all you really have to do is just import everything. So anyway, it's, it's, it's something that is, uh, there's a lot more to it than that. Just check out the website. There's a lot more. And it kind of scratches the surface. And it's something that we've been doing a while in our team. And it's always, and it has paid off in making things a little more easy to manage. So yeah, that's it. That's me. And thank you. <laughs>